title of our series that we're doing is called A Life Hidden with Christ. And that's based on Colossians 3, 2 through 4, which is the first set of verses that you have on your sheet. So let's, let's joyfully read these verses together, all right? Colossians 3, 2 through 4, out loud together. Let's read these verses. Okay, ready? Go. Set your mind on the things which are above, which are on the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ our life is manifested, you also will be manifested with Him in glory. So as you can see, uh, the title comes from verse 3, which is in the middle there. You died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And so what we covered last week uh, is firstly um, that uh, God doesn't simply want Christians who have power or knowledge or morality, but what, what God desires, according to the Bible, actually right from the beginning of the Bible in Genesis 2, is He desires for His people to know Him as life. And that's why He called the tree He wanted man to eat in Genesis the tree of what? The tree of life. That's right. It was not, not the tree of good, not the tree of knowledge. Actually, that was the wrong tree. The tree he wanted man to eat was the tree of life. And what do we mean when we use this word life? Or what, what does the Bible mean when it uses this word life? It has different meanings, but the meaning that we're, we're using uh, is from the Greek. This, this word in Greek, there's, there's actually multiple words for the word life in Greek. But this word in Greek, zoe, Z-O-E, refers to God's eternal life, the eternal life, uncreated and divine life of God. And like in John 3.16, when it says, whoever believes into him will have eternal life, that word life there is zoe, meaning God's uncreated, divine, and eternal life. So that life doesn't refer to the human life that we have extended indefinitely. It refers to a completely different life, God's life, all right? And that life is given to us when we believe in the Lord Jesus. We all have this life. And then last week, we covered, uh, I, I would say, focusing especially on this word hidden. Hidden with Christ in God. And we, we didn't pass it up. We didn't have the copies, but we did put it on the projector. And we, uh, for those of us who were there, we had this little handout uh, about seven minutes with the Lord. Now, this is just a, simply a suggestion, but the first and foremost, uh, the foundation in our Christian life is not something seen, it's something hidden. It is our hidden and personal and private times that we spend with the Lord. And uh, so, why don't we do this? I think this is helpful, okay? Uh, Last week, we, we talked about just doing our best to practice. And uh, th this is not a legality. This is simply a suggestion. There's all these items. And, of course, if you like to spend more than seven minutes with the Lord, that's great. Um, but, of course, this is referring, again, to our personal time. Just to follow up with one another, not in a way of legality, but just in a way of uh, helping one another and encouraging one another. Again, what if you just took uh, 30 seconds with the person next to you and, and just be honest, all right? We're not here to like pretend or anything like that. Just be honest. And those of you who weren't even here last week, you didn't hear about this. But hopefully you spent some time with the Lord at a certain point with the, with the Lord. Um, so uh, just ask the person next to you, how, how was your week in terms of spending, not, not, not time together with the Lord, with other believers, but just one-on-one? -on -one. How was your week in terms of spending one-on-one -on -one time with the Lord, were you able to practice any of these points that we see here on the sheet of uh, spending seven minutes with the Lord, right? I hope those of you who didn't, didn't get a chance to practice that much would not be discouraged. Uh, this is the beginning of a new week, and there's always, uh, every 24 hours we have a new day. So uh, there's always new opportunities to practice spending time with the Lord. And uh, those of you who... Maybe there's some of you who spent, you know, 20, 25 minutes, 30 minutes, I don't know, maybe more with the Lord uh, and others of you who didn't. But uh, where, wherever we are, um, we need to continue to encourage one another to, to do this. This is, this is a foundation. What we saw last week is this is a foundation in our Christian life. All right, but now we want to go on, all right? Once you have a foundation, you need to build upon that. And so that's what we want to do this week. And so the, the next verse on your sheet there is John 6.57. 
And how about we have, uh, how about, how about you, you three brothers up here, right? Why don't you read us, just loudly, John 6.57. As the living Father has sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who eats me, he also shall live because of me. Alright, so at the end of this verse it uses this phrase, So he who eats me, he also shall live because of me. And of course this is the Lord Jesus speaking. Now what does it mean to eat the Lord? What does it mean to eat the Lord? Well, what does it mean to eat? It just means that you have something outside of you that you take in, uh, you chew it, you swallow it, and eventually it just becomes part of you. It, beca it becomes uh, who you are, and you become that very thing that you are eating. And so uh, you could say, well, spending personal time with the Lord is it's, it's taking the Lord in. It's actually it's our eating of the Lord. All right. Of course, eating is something generally... Uh, of course, assuming you choose what you eat, uh, you enjoy what you eat. It's something enjoyable, but it's taking the Lord in. All right, but the verse doesn't stop there. It says, so he who eats me, he also shall live because of me. He also shall live because of me. So, yes, well, we need to spend this personal time with the Lord, but, you know, we can't spend, uh, we can't necessarily, you know, it's impossible to, simply stay in our room 24 hours a day and do nothing but these items, all right? There's, uh, if, if, you, if you spend seven minutes with the Lord, there's still 23 hours and 53 minutes left in your day, all right? So now, what, what do we do with these other, this other time? We, we, we're not always able to, we're only here, you know, Sunday morning from 11 to 12. We may just be beginning with the Lord, just spending seven minutes with the Lord. Well, what about the rest of our day. And that's what we want to cover this morning. This phrase, He also shall live because of me. Of course, if we don't eat the Lord, then it's going to be hard to live because of Him. So it starts with that, but there's more. And so, so what does this look like to uh, live, Lord? In fact, down in Philippians 1.21, it's towards the middle of your sheet. Uh, literally translated, this verse, Philippians 1.21a, Paul says, For to me... To live is Christ. All right. He doesn't say that we should live for Christ or in Christ, which are both very, very good. But he goes even further and simply says, For to me, to live is Christ. That implies a daily living where he was one with Christ and Christ was one with him. So was he all the time? Preaching? No, he wasn't. Was he all the time outwardly praying? No, he wasn't. He had to do many things. In fact, he made tents. He had to travel. And we'll get into some of those examples. But uh, yet he could say, for to me, to live is Christ. And so that brings us to our title for this week, Practical Points Concerning Living Christ in Daily Life. So how, how, do, how do we do it? We're students at USC. We have uh, obligations. We have... Uh, Academic obligations, maybe certain obligations with work, family, uh, various things. We need to take care of these things. How, in the midst of these things, can we live Christ? Can we live Him? And uh, it's like we we may continue to we may continue. There might be someone who who eats really well, but if you have a problem of uh, indigestion, then even if you eat well. Um, it, 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 it doesn't really become part of you. And furthermore, it's painful. And you may, you may actually lose your appetite. If you, you might just continuing to force yourself to eat, maybe cons consistently spending seven minutes with the Lord, well, it may not seem that fresh or that real. The Lord may not seem that real because during our daily life, we may be experienced, quote-unquote, indigestion. So what do we mean by that? Well, that's what we want to cover in the uh, next three verses, all right? 1 Kings 19.12. How about all the, all, all the guys read 1 Kings 19.12 together, and all the girls Romans 8.6, all right? Guys, uh, 1 Kings 19.12. Ready to go. And after the earthquake of fire, Jehovah was not in the fire. And after the fire, a judgment of fire. All right, so if you're going to underline or highlight something in this verse, underline a gentle quiet voice. Gentle, quiet voice. All right, it says Jehovah, or the Lord, He was not 
in the earthquake. He wasn't in the fire. Where was he? He was with the gentle, quiet voice. All right? We don't have time to get into the story. Just remember that gentle, quiet voice. All right, sisters, uh, Romans 8.6. For the mind set on the flesh is death, but the mind set on the spirit is life and peace. Okay, so for this, for this verse, underline, what do you think I'm going to say? All right, underline the very end again, life and peace. Life and peace. So we have a gentle, quiet voice. We have life and peace. Now let me read you 2 Corinthians 2.10 and 12 and 13 and see if you can guess what will underline, short phrase will underline in these, in these verses that go along with the previous two. Okay. But whom you forgive anything, I also forgive. For also what I have forgiven, if I have forgiven anything... It is for your sake in the person of Christ. Furthermore, when I came to Troas for the gospel of Christ, and a door was opened to me in the Lord, I had no rest in my spirit. For I did not find Titus my brother, but taking leave of them, I went forth into Macedonia. All right, what, do you, what, do you think, what do you think the phrase that I'm, uh, I'm thinking about in this verse is? Yeah. I heard, I heard it over here, uh, little whispers. But uh, the, the phrase I'm thinking of is towards the end. It says, I had no rest in my spirit. I had no rest in my spirit. And also, actually, there's a good phrase at the beginning, uh, which he says, he talks about being in the person of Christ. Actually, literally translated in Greek, it means in the face of Christ, in the face of Christ. All right, And the face really communicates the person. If I'm like looking at you, Andy, you know, I'm, I'm communicating something to you um, of my person, of my person. All right, so what do we see here? Uh, the way the Lord, the way that we live the Lord is to, is, to, is to simply be aware of the way that He communicates with us. And generally speaking, there are times, exceptional times, when something might happen. You might give a vision or a dream. That's in the Bible. Or uh, something supernatural might happen. But most of the time, most of the time, the way that we interact with the Lord in our daily life is by these three things. Number one, a gentle, quiet voice. All right? We might be going along our business, doing about certain things. We're, we're about to make a choice. And then the Lord, there's a gentle, quiet voice within us. You're almost like, is that me or is that the Lord? You're not, you're not quite sure. But the Lord might be like, Watch out! Watch out! <laughs> um, or you know, don't 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 do that. Do something else. Do something else. All right. There's just a gentle, quiet voice there. And then, and the next, it says, it uses this phrase, life and peace. Life and peace. Of course, I think we all know what peace is. Life indicates something of um, something of animation. Something of uh, you could say joy. Um, something of of light. Uh, of shining, uh, there's there's uh, there's a feeling within of of brightness, of brightness, and so uh, we we might again it, it refers a lot to our making choices and our doing things in our daily life, uh, how we're going to use our time, and uh, there may be a certain feeling that we have of unrest or even depression when we are going a certain direction. That's an indication that, it could be an indication, as this verse says, that the mindset on the flesh is death. But in the last part of this verse, the mindset on the spirit is life and peace. So uh, what guides us in our daily life as we're doing many, many things should be this sense within. And it's, 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 it, it takes practice just to to follow it and to, and to know, to know what it is. It's a sense of life and peace. Now, I really like the last set of verses because it's really interesting. Paul says, a door was opened to me in the Lord. All right? What that means is that outwardly, it seemed like there was a way to do something for the Lord, but inwardly, he had no rest in his spirit. All right? So there was the outward situation which seemed to be lining up in a certain direction, yet Paul in his spirit did not have that rest. And because of that, eventually he took a different direction. And uh, 
So uh, again, this this is this is this just takes some practice. This just takes some practice. You know, a lot of Christians have this phrase or. When, when I was growing up, at least it was, I'm not sure if it's still popular, but there's a you know, phrase, uh, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? Well, um, for sure that's better than thinking about what would someone else do. But um, it, it, it's, uh, in a sense, that, 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 is, that is a short consideration. Um, we're not just here to consider what, it's almost like what would Jesus do if he was here, but he's not here. You know what I mean? But actually, Jesus is here. Um, so we need to consider not just what would Jesus do, but what is Jesus doing? All right, what is Jesus doing? And the way that he speaks to us, again, it's not necessarily by outward signs. In fact, in this case, there was an outward sign, but the Lord was actually speaking in another direction. All right? And, uh, but we just have to do our best. Sometimes we're going to make mistakes. Sometimes we will make mistakes, but uh, we just have to do our best. Uh, after we after we might make a mistake, we might realize, Lord, I'm sorry, that wasn't you, that was me. I repent, Lord, I open to you. Uh, continue to lead me by the rest in my spirit. But those three things, all right? Now, uh, we want to spend the rest of the time here to see some helpful points on how we can follow that gentle, quiet voice, how we can know life and peace, and how we can follow this rest in our spirit as we go through our daily life, all right? And the first point that I would like to bring us to is in Daniel 6.10. And uh, let, me, let me read this to you, all right? You all listen. Now when Daniel came to know that the writing had been signed, he went to his house in his upper room, he had windows open toward Jerusalem, and three times daily he knelt on his knees and prayed and gave thanks before his God because he had always done so previously. All right, so we talked about uh, spending seven minutes with the Lord, and the best time to really do that is really in the morning. All right, but now, go a step further. I hope this mar marker is erasable. <laughs> okay. The Bible says something really interesting in, in many places. And actually, we just covered it Friday night in our home meeting. Um, for instance, in 1 Thessalonians 5, it says that we should unceasingly pray and always rejoice. And obviously, that doesn't mean that we need to spend 24 hours in the prayer chapel doing nothing but, you know, outwardly praying. No. Um, this, uh, this, this simply means that uh, during the day, we, we, have to just, we have to have a spirit of prayer and just remembering the Lord the best that we can. But how can we do that? All right. I heard this example and I, and I thought it was really helpful. It's clear that Daniel had set times during the day when he would contact the Lord. All right. Now, was Daniel a busy guy? How do we know? <laughs> uh, well, if you look earlier in the book of Daniel, it says that he was appointed third. In third uh, he, he was the number three guy in the province of Babylon. So you have the top guy, then you have the vice, vice president or whatever, and then you have number three. All right? Um, in, the, in the United States, in the order of secession, it would be equivalent to the Speaker of the House. Um, after the president and vice president. So, uh, so he was a busy guy. All right? Yet, what we could see here is in the midst of his day, he had certain times. Now, it doesn't say how long, and perhaps that's good. Um, it, doesn't, it, uh, it, it's, it just starts with having certain set times during the day. When we, it could just be two minutes. Uh, it could be setting an alarm on our phone, whatever it is. But when we are reminded to just turn back to the Lord. And, uh, you know, there's different ways to grow a field of grass. Seems like a tangent, but it's not. All right. Um, okay. Obviously, you can, uh, you, you know, you can plow the dirt and you can sow seed. You can water it and it takes a little bit of time to develop that grass and to grow it. Um, another way is you can just... Lay this. You can have already grass sod that's already been grown with a layer of dirt underneath, and you can just like lay it down on uh, over your field. 
But there's another way you can do it. Actually, I don't, I don't, I don't know if this is really practiced. But another thing you can do is uh, you can have patches of sod on your field. And then it's by having these patches, you can, you know, you just you water it, and you let these you let these uh, you let you let the grass spread, all right. But it starts with some definite patches that you have, and then from there, um, there's there's a spreading to take over the whole field. So this time, this point of having set times with the Lord through the day, it's like. You know, it's like having little patches through the field of our day. And uh, if you have little patches, and then uh, it, it, it's, it's a help to, little by little, for the Lord to invade our daily life. For the Lord to invade our daily life, alright? So set times with the Lord through the day. We need to be specific and have set times. Alright, now, let's, let's go on to Acts 16. Acts 16. Uh, I love this uh, Verse, I'll tell you why in a minute. All right, Acts 16, 24 through 25. It says, Who having received such a charge, threw them into the inner prison and secured their feet in the stocks. And about midnight, Paul and Silas, while praying, sang hymns of praise to God. And the prisoner, sorry, the prisoners were listening to him. The prisoners were listening to him. I love this because uh, this was not planned. All right, this is just something happening in daily life. Obviously something seemingly terrible when Paul and Silas get in prison, their feet are in stocks, and, uh, and it's not 12 noon, it is 12 midnight. And so what are they doing? They're, just, they're singing. They're singing hymns of praise. They're praying and singing hymns of praise. And uh, so um, we, uh, another verse that we covered on Friday night in our home meeting is Hebrews 13.5. Really interesting. Ask, ask the person next to you, how often does the Bible tell us we should praise the Lord? You know, there's a verse in the Old Testament that's, in which David says that he prays the Lord seven times a day. He prays the Lord seven times a day. But that's not, that's not the standard in the Bible. Uh, actually, if you look at Hebrews 13.5, it says, Let us offer up a sacrifice of praise continually to God. Let us offer up a sacrifice of praise continually to God. Now, um, my question for myself, I, I point the finger at myself before anybody else, is how much Monday through Saturday do we praise the Lord? Do we praise the Lord? All right. Um, not just pray to the Lord, but praise the Lord. And I, 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 I just love this story. You know, bad things are happening, and uh, Paul and Silas, they're not complaining, but they're, contra they're, they're absolutely doing the opposite, which is they're praising. They're praising. In the midst of their daily life, they're not, they're not, they're not in the temple, right? They're not in the temple here. They're in jail, but what are they doing? They're praising. They're singing hymns of praise. So, uh, to me, this is, uh, th well, this is from the example of Paul's life. This is part of living Christ in our daily life. It's uh, just asking the Lord. And you know what? It's not easy to remember, but we just need to pray. Lord, remind me to praise you during the day. All right? So I'm going to put praise. And remember, when I say praise, I'm not talking about Sunday morning. I'm talking about, you know, Wednesday night, Thursday morning, Friday afternoon. Okay? And then another thing, this is awesome. Acts 27. Again, this is an awesome story. Paul He's on a ship that's lost at sea. And here we go. Acts 27, 33 through 36. And until day was about to come, so it's night, all right? Uh, these people are bothered. They're up, even when they're supposed to be sleeping. Paul encouraged them all to take some food, saying, Today is the 14th day that you have continued watching without food. So they were on this long journey, lost at sea, 14 days without food. That's a long time taking nothing. Therefore I encourage you to take some food, for this is for your salvation, for not a hair from the head of any one of you shall perish. And when he had said these things and had, and had taken bread, he gave thanks to God before all, and he broke it and began to eat. And all became cheerful, and they also took food. Alright, so again, here you have Paul, 
He's not in the temple. He's not in a religious setting. He's on a ship, lost at sea. Many of the people hadn't eaten for 14 days. Really, really discouraging. And then what did he do? Of course, he, he spoke a little encouraging word, but I like this phrase. Uh, he gave thanks to God before all. All right? And that giving of thanks completely turned the situation around. Right? That's what it said. And all became cheerful. And they also took food. All right? So another, another uh, just from this example of Paul, another thing that we can do, to, this is on practical points concerning living Christ in daily life. Another thing we can do in our daily life is to give thanks. Um, give thanks to God before all. All right? Give thanks to God before all. Uh, I think many of us pray before we eat or, you know, but uh, certainly don't want to be limited to that. Uh, but giving thanks to God in the midst of our daily life, even before others. Are others going to say anything negative about giving thanks? They really, they really shouldn't. Um, in fact, uh, it might help them to become cheerful, as it says here in Acts 27. Um, but uh, taking the lead to praise and then also give thanks before God. Right? Just a, and and for, for sure, this list is not all-inclusive. It's just some points, all right? Uh, all right, now we're almost done. And let's get into the last point. Uh, how about all the... Uh, how about, let's all read together Matthew 18, 20. For where there are two or three gathered into my name, there am I in their midst. And you know what? The next one is really good as well. Acts 2, 46 and 47. Let's read that. And day by day, continuing steadfastly with one accord in the temple, Bread from house to house. They partook of their food with exultation and simplicity of heart, praising God and having grace with all the people. And the Lord added together day by day those who were being saved. So I like that phrase uh, again, day by day. Day by day. And, of course, there's another similar phrase, house to house. Day by day and house to house. So in the early church life there in Acts 2, uh, they didn't just see each other once a week on Sunday morning. There was some fellowship during the week. Uh, they saw each other, according to what it says here, day by day. And not just in the temple, but from house to house. So they, they were visiting one another in their homes. They were visiting one another where they lived. And uh, so I'm going to put a phrase... Uh, day by day. And then, uh, what, what we see in Matthew 18 is, uh, well, in Acts 2, the size of the gatherings they had was obviously enough, small enough to fit in a house. But in Matthew 18, it mentions a specific number of people. It says two or three. Two or three. That's not a lot. Just two or three. Where two or three are gathered into my name, there am I in their midst. All right, so just consider uh, one, uh, one huge point on being strengthened, being reminded to live Christ in daily life is, is, to, is to see each other. If I'm walking around on campus and I, just, and I see Josh, even if he doesn't say anything spiritual or doesn't read a verse to me or anything like that, I'm going to be reminded about the Lord. I'm definitely going to be reminded about the Lord. And, uh, but even better, you know, is there, do we have one or two others? Do we have one or two others to form a two or a three? Where we have, and do we have a time? It could just be five minutes. It could be ten minutes uh, where, we can, where we can pray and enjoy the Lord together. Um, and uh, that is a really important aspect of our Christian life. This, this number two and three is actually, I wish we had more time to get into it. But there's something special about this small unit of two or three. Not 50, not 100, but two or three. We need to have two or three, one or two that we are specifically related to, that we can uh, pray with, that we can enjoy the Lord with. And uh, if we do, then... Um, Uh, 
they will be a big help to us in terms of uh, living Christ in our daily life. In our daily life, all right? Uh, hopefully, um, you can uh, remember some of these points this week. Uh, just give this week to the Lord. And uh, again, uh, nobody's perfect. Uh, we all fail, including myself. Everybody, we're all in the same boat. Uh, what we just, we're just doing our best that we can to practice, uh, to learn. When we make mistakes, we don't give up. Uh, but we just do our best to continue to pursue the Lord uh, according to these points.